So one of the important things about any library that you embed into your program, whether it be Lua or anything else, is that if that library allocates memory, you really need to be able to work out how is it allocating the memory and where is that memory coming from? Because um, there's a very good chance that you, you could be working in an environment where let's say, let's say you have been given a memory pool by the team that you work with and you've got a budget of two megabytes and this two megabytes is in this pool and everything you have to allocate comes out of this two megabyte pool. If it doesn't come out of there, you can't allocate it. So if, if you, you're using a library like Lua, for instance, and, and it's just allocating memory from some magic place and you don't know where it is, that means you just can't use that library. Now, luckily, the developer or developers of Lua know this and um, they allow you to override the way that the function that Lua uses to allocate all its memory in its core and you can provide your own function for that. So Lua's core itself doesn't actually know how to allocate memory. It has a function that it calls uh, and that does the allocation. Now, by default, they've given us one for free. So it's like, well, use this one until you make your own. Um, but really what it means is that Lua itself doesn't actually know how to allocate memory. Um, and we can actually see it here because we've been using it before when we've been doing this Lua L new state, this really simple program. We just create the Lua state and close it. The, the L is like a, an extended library function. Um, um, and if we actually want to do the, the actual normal new state, we'll see that it, it wants a, a pointer to an allocation function and it wants something called a void start, something called UD. So what is going on there? Because, I mean, even before we've started a Lua program, we've had to allocate memory for the state itself. So the very first thing we did must have been a memory allocation because otherwise Lua can't even work. So if we just look in what it's done here, we can see that actually under the hood, this function is just a pass through for new state with uh, an allocation function that it's provided for us. And if we look at that, we can see that actually this is where all the memory allocations for Lua come from. And it's got a few parameters, but it's not the most complicated thing in the world. So what re we really want to do is we want to change the way Lua behaves. And we do that by, well, to start with, we can just copy their template. Um, and put it into our own program. So we'll take, uh, well, I'll have to put that inside a struct here. And th this is just because I'm working inside the main method. So I can't paste that function straight in here. Um, I'm just going to take a copy of their, their allocation function. I'm going to put it in a struct called Lua mem. Um, and then I'm going to use that instead of the one that Lua is providing me. So I'll, I'll get rid of the L and we'll go for the, the full new state thing. Uh, and it wants a function pointer to the allocation uh, function, which is this L alloc. And it wants this UD. Now, UD stands for user data. But in this case, it's not the user data that we've been working with before in the Lua VM and on the stack and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's literally just a C pointer to something that will get passed through to every single allocation. Um, so you can see it there being passed through to this one. Um, and the, the, the good thing about that is that allows you to create your own, um, uh, basically you could create your own memory pool that you could pass through to everything and then you could allocate out of the memory pool or you could create some debug tracking information to try and track leaks or whatever. Um, but we don't have to use that. So, I mean, for this example, let's just make a note there in code that we're not using it. But this, this UD, we, we might be interested in that. In fact, we probably will be. So we'll pass that through there. And now we have our Lua new state allocating through our own memory allocation function. So this is really important that, that we've now, not only does this um, change the way that the Lua state itself allocates, every single allocation and deallocation in the future will now go through this function. So let's just check that that works. Um, I mean, it's not gonna, it's not gonna do much because this script doesn't do much, but it didn't crash. We asserted that uh, we actually got a state back. So that's the beginnings of us being able to use um, the allocation in Lua. So next time we'll probably um, just look at, uh, for starters, we'll keep with what Lua's given us and we'll use the, f the realloc and free that they've provided here. We'll look at what all these parameters mean and we'll, we'll to start with, we'll, we'll keep what they've got, but we'll maybe try and provide some uh, debug tracking or leak information. And then 
after that, if we want to go even further, let's try and provide our own memory pool and let's pass our own memory pool in and start allocating from that. And we can see if we can get better performance out of Lua just by um, using our own memory pool and changing the way it allocates memory. So it's really good that Lua can do that. And I think every, every library that you want to embed in a program, whether it's your own library or whether it's someone else's, if it's designed to be embedded in an application, it should be able to, to have this, this way or something similar of changing the way the memory allocation works. It's very important.